So now that the 2013 NFL Scouting Combine is done and gone, it's time for me to update my mock draft. And this version is going to be a three-round mock. I'm not sure if all three rounds are necessarily going to fit in the description box down below, but I'll try to make it fit. If it doesn't, I'll figure out some other way for you to see each of my picks for the three rounds. Now, obviously, over the course of the past week, one big piece of news that happened that will definitely impact the 2013 NFL draft is the Alex Smith trade. I've done a video about my thoughts on the Alex Smith trade and why it was a mistake big time for the Kansas City Chiefs, but that information, you can find that video on my channel. Uh, but it will, no question, shake up the 2013 NFL draft. You can't even deny that at this point. You know for sure now that the Kansas City Chiefs are not going to draft a quarterback with their first overall selection. Right or wrong, that's just the way it is. Does that mean they could be looking to try and trade down and hope that somebody trades up because they value Geno Smith or some other player more? Perhaps. Or they could stay put and take what they feel is the best player available. Again, I might not agree with who they end up choosing, uh, but the fact of the matter is we are going to get a much different looking draft board now. That For some of you that sit there and say, well, I knew they weren't going to take a quarterback all along. Well, I also don't think you could have sat there and said that you knew that the Chiefs were going to give up a second-round pick in 2013 and maybe a third or second-round pick in 2014 to trade for somebody else's backup quarterback. So let's not pretend like we're all the amazing Kreskin here or anything like that. Keep this in mind, too. When we're talking about mock drafts, this is the beginning of March. We still have almost two full damn months left. You've still got pro days and individual workouts and other things that can happen. Free agency still hasn't started yet. So for a lot of us, myself included, and a lot of you that are going to watch and critique my mock draft, that think we know 100% for sure what the fuck is going to happen, you really don't, and I really don't. I'm going based off of history of a combination of things. Teams draft philosophies, players I think are going to continue to rise, players that will fall, how drafts usually play out historically. Those are some of the things that I factor in when I put together mock drafts. And sometimes I do them with certain scenarios in mind. Now, as far as my three-round mock, um, when you look, you'll notice that you've got Geno Smith going number three overall. You've got Matt Barkley <laughs> going to the Jets at number nine. <laughs> And then I've got a third one going with um, Mike Glennon going to the Houston Texans at pick number 27. E.J. Manuel going with the first pick of the second round to the Jacksonville Jaguars. This is going to be, I've mentioned it before, an interesting quarterback class. I think it somewhat is comparable to the 2011 class, where you could have four guys go in the first 12 picks, or maybe on the flip side of that, you could end up with maybe one or two guys going in the top 10 and then everybody else kind of drops. Maybe somebody trades back up into the bottom portion of the first round to get somebody like a Glennon or an E.J. Manuel or maybe a Ryan Nassib from Syracuse, what have you. But it was hard when I was doing this mock draft because it's like I'm sitting there and I'm looking at all these teams in the top nine that I feel need to address the quarterback position. That's Jacksonville. That's Philadelphia. Um, that's Cleveland. You know, that's Arizona. That's Buffalo. But it's really hard because the number of teams that need quarterback and the types of quarterbacks that are currently available, the need doesn't match the talent or the talent doesn't match the need, whatever your perspective is. That doesn't mean that some teams aren't going to uh, reach and overdraft for quarterbacks. That's very possibly could be the case. We've got a lot of time left in this draft process. We've got a lot of time left in terms of uh, free agency. So it's going to be interesting to see. We did find out that there were several big winners from the scouting combine. No surprise to me, Ezekiel Lanza, the defensive end slash outside linebacker from BYU. I think he pretty much cemented at this point his status as a top 10 pick. People are going to look at him at six foot five, 270 pounds and see his combination of size, speed, athleticism, and they're going to drool over that. Yeah, he's raw, but the upside is tremendous. You know, you could draft in the first round, especially in the top ten, looking for safe picks, and that's fine and well and good. But sometimes you have to take a risk. You've got to take a chance with the potential of the payoff being either bigger. Other guys that had um, have seen their draft stock just skyrocket since the combine would be Sharif Floyd, the defensive tackle from uh, Florida. I mean, there's talk of him going number two to Jacksonville, perhaps being an outside chance of him going number one to freaking Kansas City, because God knows! 
If there's one thing that Andy Reid loves drafting more than offensive linemen in the first round, it's fucking defensive linemen in the first round. Deion Jordan, the outside linebacker from Oregon, helped himself out tremendously. A combine is perfectly suited for somebody like Deion Jordan. Lane Johnson, somebody else that helped himself out tremendously. John Cooper, the center slash guard from North Carolina. Tavon Austin, the wide receiver from West Virginia, somebody that I'm a very big fan of. Uh, he really helped himself at the Combine. And there's some really big fallers from the Combine, too. Some to differing levels than others, and some that there's still question marks about. Uh, Star Latulale, obviously with the concerns over whether his heart condition is serious or not, he's dropped. How much has he dropped? I don't know. That's going to be determined over the next month and a half or so. You could see a situation where some teams, when they start hearing about heart, some teams may have already taken him off the draft board entirely, no matter even if his physical comes back and everything else, and they say it's all good, it was just dehydration, overexertion, whatever. He's probably been yanked off of a few teams' draft boards already, and chances are a couple of teams in the top ten. You could see Latulule, you know, be a situation where he goes somewhere between 10 and 14 and everything's fine and a team gets rewarded for taking that chance. Or he could really plummet because there are legitimate concerns about his heart condition and teams question whether or not he's going to potentially just drop dead on the field. Uh, Jarvis Jones, the outside linebacker from Georgia. You know, you've heard mixed stuff, I'm sure, if you've been reading up on this. Some people are going to talk about that he seemed to be okay and his medical went well. I don't think his medical went that well, and there seem to be other sources that kind of corroborate that. Jarvis Jones is the type of guy that teams are looking for that Von Miller type of outside linebacker that could play in a 3-4 or a 4-3. You know, they will like Jarvis Jones. There's obviously the concern about the spinal stenosis. Um, as far as how much has Jarvis Jones' draft stock dropped, that's hard to determine. This could be a guy that ends up still going in the top five picks because he's one of the five, top five talents. When you take out injury concerns, he's one of the top five talents in this entire draft, or he could drop into the 15 to 20 to 25 to 30 range, maybe even early second round. It just all depends. He could get that to Quan Bowers' treatment. Demontre Moore, the outside linebacker slash defensive end from Texas A&M, did not have a good combine. When you are 250 pounds and you only put up 12 reps in the bench, that's not good. And then you go out and run a 4-9 in the 40, and you're supposed to be playing a position at the NFL, outside linebacker in a 3-4, where speed and quickness and explosiveness are important. You know, Demontre Moore, I'm not a huge fan of to begin with, and now I think you could quite possibly see him drop into the second round unless he goes out in his pro day and just tears it up. Jorn Werner, the defensive end from Florida State, I don't think he had a horrible combine, but I think it's one of these things where it's not so much what he didn't do, it's what other people like Ziggy Ansah and Sharif Floyd and Deion Jordan did do. As their stock goes up, a guy like Bjorn Werner, he'll see his stock drop a little bit. He could go into play for teams such as Miami at number 12, all the way down to maybe, I, it would be hard pressed for me to see a team like the New York Giants passing up on a Werner if he was there at number 19. Monty Teo, I continue to think that his draft stock is only going to go down from here. I don't think he'll escape out of the second round, but to say that somebody's going to take a chance on him at the first round at this point, You'd be very hard-pressed to convince me of that, unless you said it was the Baltimore Ravens at 32. Otherwise, I think this is a guy that his draft range in the second round could be anywhere from Detroit all the way on farther down to maybe a Chicago or even a Minnesota. Um, all the distractions that come along with Teo right now, some teams are going to shy away from that. His relatively pedestrian 4-8-2-40 time, some teams are going to be concerned in today's NFL. They're looking for maybe more athletic middle linebackers in the mold of a Luke Keekley, who was drafted ninth overall by the Panthers last year. Uh, some teams may shy away, shy away from Monte Teo for other reasons. Uh, Sam Montgomery, the outside linebacker slash defensive end from LSU. You know, there was this bug, bugaboo, this kind of uh, buzz about him that coaches at LSU were frustrated by him because he took games off and he took plays off. And, you know, especially with, against second-tier opponents. And there seemed to be quite an uproar that he indeed admitted to such a thing, talking about if he wasn't playing a, you know, a Georgia or an Alabama or a Florida, he might not have put forth as much effort. But he did also say that in the NFL, everybody's a Georgia, Florida, and Alabama. Now, you know, to be honest, he was honest. And maybe that's a good thing, and maybe some teams will appreciate that honesty. Other teams may look at it and say, well, if he wasn't putting forth effort in college, what happens when he gets a big payday? 
So in the meantime, I've got him dropping big time. He might be able to get somebody to take a chance on him in the second round, but I would be surprised at this point. Uh, the bottom line is free agency is still upcoming. We've probably got some other big moves yet to go down in the NFL. Uh, pro days are still coming. I'll be back here in another week or so, I'm sure, with another mock draft. Uh, but it's going to constantly change. I will promise you that.